know, welcome to the Nimic Podcast. I'm your usual host, Richie. Today, we're going to be talking about the implementation of web nodes in our Nimic proof of stake testnet that we recently released. To talk about that, I'm here with Soren, front end engineer of the team, and with JD, blockchain engineer of the team, who has been also working a lot with our browser client, Wasm implementation so welcome guys how are you feeling today good great yeah thanks mm, okay i still have you so then we're here <laughs> i still have you over here then <laughs> great so um guys let's start with um just refresh your memory a bit we have web notes in nimic it, that's something very special about our project what how is that different to other like wallets how they, they connect to the blockchain yeah so usually uh, other blockchains well usually other blockchains don't have these native nodes that we have the native in browser nodes that connect directly to the network and do the validation and proving of the state themselves usually other blockchains connect to s servers run by the projects or by some decentralized rpc servers but those still are intermediates to the network to the actual blockchain network and in our case our nodes are directly integrated and, and and i think you have a, a like a really good analogy right like so if you would ask me to explain like i'm five on explain like I'm 10 in that case, basically because it uh, involves teachers. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, what I thought explains it quite well is that, so y you're in school and you're in, in class and the teacher talks to you and the th basically the teacher talk uh, explains to you how math works, for example, right? Explains to you two plus two is four and 10 divided by three. And you're trusting that teacher, right? Is some weird decimal number, right? <laughs> And you're trusting the teacher to distill all this knowledge from from the science community, basically, right? Not just math, but everything else. And so the teacher is the intermediary between you and the the whole wealth of knowledge. Now imagine if you could instead go to the scientists, go to the mathematicians, go to the famous people like I don't know Galileo and yeah. you know, directly and ask them and get proof of their discoveries basically directly from them super cool yeah and so you wouldn't have to trust anybody to stand between you and your sources and that's what what the nimic browser client does it directly asks the source of truth the, the nodes in the network directly and validates what they are saying exactly so that's an interesting analogy so jd if you could go and like meet one of these famous scientists who, who would it be uh good question uh i would i would like children probably or something like Yes. Yeah, Turin, yeah, Turin will be like... He was a, gen right. he was a genius, I yeah. think, yeah. How about you, Soren? <laughs> I, I actually think about who specifically. All of them? Mm. That's kind of cheesing out, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, little. I think it will be super interesting to meet, like, Darwin, for example. Oh, yeah. Maybe not in the science, it's biology a little bit, but... Uh, and Newton, of course. But, well, a very interesting analogy. Uh, so, okay, going back to our topic of the the browser nodes. Now, not talking like I'm five or like I'm 10. Uh, like, ne le let's now go into like technical details. How does it work? Uh, so basically for 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 our web client, what we are shipping or what we are gonna ship uh, once we open your wallet, and this is something that Soren knows much better than, than myself, then basically we will have this, uh, you know, Wasm client, which will be like a light client of, of, our, of our network. And then basically the, the process of actually that client will be to get consensus through the CKPs or the zero knowledge proofs that we actually have, such that basically it can sync, you know, really fast. And we have seen and we have tested that that actually is the case. And with that, then basically we can, once we are synced, basically we can start, you know, just uh, we, we are we are already connected to some of the networks or the nodes on the network, sorry. Uh, and then basically we can start, you know, uh, getting all the information that we need in order to verify that uh, the state of the blockchain is basically what, uh, or the data that we're receiving is actually the state of the blockchain. So this is all verified and uh, basically we're running a little or a small, you know, blockchain within our wallets and we're connecting directly to every single, well, some of a set of basically the nodes on the, on the network. Uh, that are actually, you know, validating or are providing services for, for the Nimit blockchain. Exactly, and I think what's also a good, great setting point of these ZK proofs, your knowledge proofs, is that they are constant size. And that means no matter how far the chain has been along, how old the chain is, how many blocks there are, the, the sync will always take a uh, very, very, very small amount of bytes, actually, right? Very small amount of data, uh, always the same size. And then from there, you just, like, you 
you prove the last checkpoint block and then from there you just sync the last few hours very quickly. Yeah. But this will always be concise no matter how old, how many years the chain has been running already. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I mean, and it's actually something that we are, it's in Wasm, right? So basically, um, well, we are actually the whole project, we are running, well, we are, it's written in Rust and then we are converting this to Wasm, uh, thanks to uh, Rust itself. And then basically, uh, well, this is something that will run on your browser uh, very lightly, I would say. And uh, yeah, I mean, it will, it, this basically will allow the wallet, which uh, you know better to actually, you know, directly call, you know, any of the functionality of this, you know, little little note in the in the yeah. in your browser. Yeah. And then, uh, well, that's what we will be presenting as the final user in the wallet. So exactly. exactly. So let's see what is the when when a user opens the wallet, what is the first thing that happens? It's the same as. Uh previous right so the the client starts up and try, starts connecting to the network pulls zero knowledge proofs as daniel said earlier the difference is just that now it's not running in javascript anymore as it was before but it's actually running in a byte code right in, in compiled web assembly from from rust and it does it all the stuff it uh, exposes the api that we need to get information out of it to for the wallet interface but uh yeah, it, 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 that's it just syncs, right? What do you think it, those are, you know, like th those differences between, you know, the implementation of the wallet in 1.0 and the, the current implementation in 2.0, like, what do you think are the differences between actually having this interface? So what I noticed is that proof of stake is much more com complex, also complicated, but also much more complex and uh, much more system that work together. So proof of work is relatively simple. But uh, proof of stake is much more efficient, and so it's definitely worth it to have this uh, bigger complexity. Um, the the biggest difference is basically that with a JavaScript client, we could use every basically every uh, low level class, every low level functionality of the client directly, because everything was exposed on the on the on the top. So we could go in and actually use the serialized buffer, or we could use in and actually use the hash methods directly or some crypto helpers or like various classes and now everything that we want to use in the browser we need to explicitly expose through the web assembly yeah, in the board interface exactly and so currently I, I worked on this a lot right I, I exposed all the functionality that we need for the wallet so far but there's still stuff that the old um, or the previous sorry not the old but the, the previous uh, JavaScript client could do or made made available that the Wasm client also sometimes cannot, but currently does not yet. So we will have to add some more interfaces, interface definitions there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that is something that we have been working on, and I think kind of the main challenge has been like you know, uh, yeah, this interface, and uh, we have to. I mean, not everything in Rust we can expose it directly. It's exactly. you know some some constraints, and then basically um, kind of the secret I will say is like. We need to make everything serial serializable, such that basically in the JavaScript world it can be. Yeah, everything needs to be understood by JavaScript as well. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, quite quite some challenges over there, right? Yeah. Okay. Now that you're talking about that, um, I know that compiling Rust to WebAssembly is not straightforward, or I mean, it's still there as there's it's very very new, I would say. It's it's, I wouldn't say it's new. The, the I think there was wasn't BindGen has been around for a long time. But uh, yeah, it does not support all, all Rust functionality. Like Rust, lots of Rust code uses traits to implement functionality for different classes, and traits are not supported at all in with Wasm bindgen to 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 bridge to to JavaScript. So basically, everything that is implemented in traits in the native uh, classes in Rust, native structs, uh, I would have to, I had to make uh, like re-implement a getter on top of wrapper on top of it. We also faced some challenges integrating uh, or doing this Wasm compilation stuff and it was mostly at the beginning because of the runtime. There's also stuff yeah. that uh, works. We actually, I mean, the amount of, uh, or the runtime itself that we were using, you know, we had a bunch of async code and then basically uh, we, we in that runtime that actually manages all these, you know, executors and all that in Rust, that is something that we couldn't, you know, like use for, for, for Wasm. Uh, and I think, uh, well, that is uh, the, what, the way we, we could find to actually, you know, work around this or use uh, it's basically use, you know, like this uh, 
uh, well, some of the already created grades for 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 launching, you know, futures in Wasan, which is the, which kind of the limitation is that we will have all, we we currently have only just one single thread, and this is basically yeah. uh, where we are actually you know managing to launch everything. Uh, so far, it has been working great, but this is something that we want to change actually yeah, exactly. uh, for the future. I remember when when you guys started, you and Claudio started uh, converting on like trying to get it run in in Wasan. You noticed all the different crates and all the different stuff that wasn't actually supported in WebSM. So, for example, everything that has to do with time, instance, yeah. right? WebSMD itself has no knowledge of time. It relies on the actual host it runs in to support this. So we had to, you had to change to use some wasn't enabled or wasn't supported uh, time libraries to get the timings from the browser into into WebAssembly, right? Yeah, that and also like uh, I remember that also at the beginning we we used to have like you know a lot of assumptions on file system stuff. Or right. The file system, yeah. Right. We don't have a file system in WebAssembly, yeah. And in WebAssembly we have to change uh, a bit mm. all that. So it was uh, you know quite quite an adventure to get it mm -hmm. at the beginning, yeah. But that that did work for the first time and we were super happy and then from there I could start adding all the interface. I mean, and I was super surprised surprised because I mean just you know like uh, I will say days after we actually get it working, then you were already close <laughs> adding to integrate it and playing with it. So I was all learning learning by doing a lot. And uh, actually yesterday when I got it running for the first time in the browser really, I noticed Hmm. There's another Rust limitation that I'm running into, which is having a mutable reference to self and a non-mutable reference to self cannot happen at the same time in Rust. But since all the interface of the client is async, every function is called can be called at the same time, but just like then run in the background. So actually calling functions failed, method on the interface failed because one method was requiring a mutable self-reference self and the other one was trying to get a normal one. And then Rust said, nope. Not doing that. <laughs> yeah. So, but with the help of uh, colleagues, I was able to change the to remove all mutable references. So now we just have read-only references, and that works perfectly. That works nice. Then. Cool. So it works. Uh, but what's next? I know that still in testnet phase, we're still testing. What is likely to change in like Wasm or the wallet side of, of things? Well, one of the things that I have in my mind is basically uh, performance. And uh, this is basically what we uh, talked before a little bit is, uh, well, right now we are running everything like in this single thread. And one of the ideas is to actually, you know, improve this a little bit, use different like, worker threads or service threads such that we can actually improve the performance on, on the wallet side. And then basically also, you know, have like uh, probably better manage, ma management of the uh, network connections that we actually have. Uh, because if we use like a service thread, then we could probably, you know, manage them all through for some, for, for, for a lot of windows in, in that, in this service worker. And then basically, you, you know, every single, you know, client, client can connect to it. No. But I mean, yeah, that, for instance, in the, in the Wasm side, I'm not sure if, uh, what do you think? No, that's, uh, it's actually a good point. Um, now, like, we all, we, I've only just recently got, right, got the, got the client to run and have all the functionality in the browser already. So luckily it also already runs on my, in my wallet that I have, I can, I can send trans, I can send transactions, I can stake, unstake, all this stuff receive live updates about incoming transactions. So that's pretty cool. But I noticed that, especially at startup, it sometimes hangs the whole website for a bit, right? Yeah. The, the animations are, are stuttering because there wasn't run some stuff, heavy communication stuff in the background. And uh, so the first step will probably be to put the whole thing into a worker, into a web worker in the browser so that it runs off the main thread so that the user interface remains uh, fluid, remains uh, active. And then the next step is, as you can, as you said, like exploring if we can actually have it multi-threaded in the browser as well. There are some limitations though about that. I recently yeah. read about it. Um, so was multi-threading only arrived recently and is still behind Flex also, I think in Chrome and even Firefox. And it also requires that the server sends special headers. Some, some, uh, so, so that the actual, the array buffer, the, the shared memory, it's actually going to be a shared array buffer so that the threads can share it. So there are some requirements. Not every website that embeds the client will automatically have it. So would have to make it detectable in a way yes. also. So there are some requirements on the, on the server that delivers this was more so yeah. website that we experience. need to look at. Yeah. yeah, but it can be done. Yeah. It can yeah. be done. Well, of course. And do you have any, any plans for, of uh, changing something on the wallet? Right. So interface or something. The 
second wallet, the wallet V2, as the UL was called until now, um, already worked quite well. It, until now, it worked with the RPC interface. So not very decentralized, <laughs> very intermediary. But now we have the now we get the wasm client. So now it's actually a proper, proper connection. Um, but we so far we have not spent much time on the actual like, on the UI, apart from that make it apart from that it actually works right. So it, for example, there's currently a placeholder for for the staking graph. There's placeholders for the icons. There's placeholder for the staking amount and stuff like that. So. The front end team is working on improving that now that we actually have the test net. All right, yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, and, and in terms of like, those are like the next things that we are going to be working on, but there's also tests going on at the same time. What kind of things are you looking to test now that is in testnet based? Like, you know, a lot of users connecting at the same time, a lot of users staking on staking. What are you looking for? Yeah, so I think from from the from the from the protocol itself or from the from the network perspective, then I think it's scaling. Scaling is one of these things that we want to test. And so basically it will be very helpful if, if basically all the community members start, you know, connecting or using the wallet because they will run this, their own node within the wallet. And then this will add, you know, more nodes to the network. And I mean, uh, well, we, this is something that we haven't been able to test that much because I mean, this is something that uh, can come only if actually users start, you know, uh, connecting to the, to, to the network. Right. Right. So yeah, scaling is one of the, those in those things, and I guess from the UI perspective, also it helps also for the, if the users start, you know, clicking you know buttons and trying to use <laughs> uh, you know, fuzzy test browsers <laughs> and all that. Yeah, we also want to know exactly um, if it works in our browsers. Like there's lots of browsers, especially on mobile. There's browsers various capabilities, so we want to have people test in all the possible. Like the more the mm. the more variety, the better, right? To see uh, what breaks or it hopefully doesn't. But yeah, like you said, uh, click all the buttons, basically <laughs> do like send transactions, stake, unstake, see if your rewards come in. And yeah, if basically if, if it works as you expect, right? And if not, then let us know. How, how, how cool actually a member can, uh, or a community member can let us know. Yeah, so we obviously, we have the, we have the Telegram channel for people on Telegram. We have uh, Discord for people on Discord. We have a forum, nemic.community. Forum.nimic.community. Forum where you can uh, create issue posts. And obviously, we have everything on GitHub. So people with a GitHub account can also create issues in our repositories, in the wallet repository, in the protocol repository, or wherever you see fit, because then we can we can always move the issue to the respective place it's required. Um, yeah, basically, let us know through any channel, and the community rep representatives will get it. We'll get it to the developers. We'll get it to us. And for developers that want to test out the Wasm implementation, they can do it in their own, on their own apps, right? Yes. Yeah, so um, I'm currently working on, on, like, I'm waiting for actually the client to be finished for the testnet. Um, so then I, I, we're actually going to make an npm package that people can then use and install and try out in their apps. Exactly. And cool. now we actually have an we will actually have an npm package that you can use in a bundler. You can use with Webpack and Rollup and Veed and all, and anything else really. Um, because the previous one didn't work because it required some external the external wasm file and the external path and stuff like that. So but now th this this is actually wasm pack gives us a bundle bundleable <laughs> bundleable bundles. Yeah. And I guess we, this is something that we could publish uh, soonish as soon as we basically... Yeah, so by the time this video goes out, the testnet will already be running and uh, probably have an announcement somewhere where this, where this package is. Yeah. Okay, amazing. So, well, you know it, just go to wallet.nimic... Oh no, what is the URL actually? I don't know yet. What is it? We have to ask Jeff. So, yeah. It will be in the description. Yeah, go to nimic.com <laughs> slash blog. We will have an announcement yes. about the testnet and how to test this out. We will have a different check in, the check in the description. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> As the YouTubers do. Reach out to us and ask any questions. There's Soren and JD there to help you. And thank you guys for joining me. See you in the next one. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Enjoy testing. We enjoy reading the issue reports. <laughs> we do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye.